Good afternoon, friends. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Justin. I play guitar on songs in Nashville. And I wanted to answer the question that I get more than any other. And that is, how do I level up? So that I get asked that in a variety of contexts. And for one of those contexts, the way that we play, hopefully a lot of my videos have been helpful. And I also just started filming a course. Sorry, I didn't just fin start filming it. I finished filming it, and it's going to be offered soon. And it's, it's all about revisiting fundamentals in a way that helped make us creative. So getting out of a rut, uh, in terms of your playing, learning how to come up with parts in a band context, learning how to listen to other people, how do we view the fretboard, how do we think of music, all of that. Um, it's, it's, it's sort of a mindset shift that I made sort of naturally over time as I moved into this kind of career and I think it's something that would be really helpful for a lot of people. It's not aimed at beginners, but it's not super advanced. It's more about revisiting the fundamentals from a fresh perspective, which what I think is a, going to be a fresh perspective for a lot of people. So look for that in the future. Um, today, though, I want to talk about leveling up in terms of the amount of work that we get. I get this question a lot. I get it from younger players in town. I get it from players outside of town, people in other markets, uh, just mostly guitar players who are like, hey, how do I, how do I get more work? How do I get to the next level? I've kinda, I'm kind of tapped out where I've hit. I feel like I've maxed out. And so I've got three things that I want to share. Um, some of them might be hard pills to swallow, uh, but that's okay because I'd rather tell you the truth. <laughs> Uh, but before we do that, I've been trying to level up in my open open slide playing. I, I've tuned my Novo uh, to open D. So all that means is that it's a D chord. It's a D, A, D, F sharp, A, D. That's a D major triad. D, F sharp, and A. One, three, five. A major third followed by a minor third. Major triad. That's what the whole guitar is. And so, you know, if we're in the key of D, you know, you probably you probably know you've got your four chord, the G chord on the fourth fret, and your five chord at the seventh fret. My slide's not quite long enough to reach all six strings. So what, what makes things a lot more musical in an open tuning is if, if you realize that you're not just stuck playing flat bar chords in those spots. At open, 5th fret, 7th fret, 12th fret, right? You're not just stuck playing your 1, 4, and 5 chords. You can hint at other chords by playing pieces of them. And it's helpful uh, just for me, being a Nashville guy, also having been a math guy, I think in terms of numbers, I think in terms of chords. So this is all the one chord. This is one, five, one, three, five, one. Well, if that's three, then that's four. That's actually dadgad tuning, right? Dadgad tuning is just a sus chord. That's all it is. You're going from D major to D sus four. Uh, and then wherever you capo, it changes that key or changes that chord, right? So if that's the, that's the third, that's the four, that's the five, there's the six, flat seven, seven. Man, listen to the, the beat. It's a beat frequency, right? The difference in those wavelengths you're hearing you're hearing the difference between them. Uh, and then at the eighth fret, you've got the root again, right? Uh, on the D string, I got three D strings in open D, but what is also our D string in standard tuning, if that's the one, there's the two, there's the three, right? That's what we tune the next string to. And then your four, Five at the seventh fret, six, 
seven, and the one up at the twelfth fret. Well, if if this is a one chord, and this is a four chord, then I can get major chords with a full flat bar on any fret that I want. I can go flat three, right? Two major. <laughs> flat two or flat nine. But, you know, if you're staying in the key of D, a lot of those other major chords don't really make sense. So you kind of got to find a way to play pieces of chords. And you shouldn't just be playing all six strings anyway, you know. I never spend time in an open tuning, so it's just kind of fun to mess around with it. Uh, but again, I, I think in terms of the degree of the scale, what the open string is, and then I figure out where the other degrees of the chord or of the key that I'm in are. So a lot of this sort of aligns with the very beginning of my course. So maybe you'll check that out. Let's get onto the topic of the video. Um, I want to start by reading you a recent example of this question. I get this, this question in, in multiple forms. How do I level up? How do I get more gigs? How do I start recording? How do I get out of a rut? Whatever, blah, blah, blah. All those things, right? So uh, I'm going to grab my phone and read you a recent question I got from a guy that I ended up answering. Uh, if you send me these questions, <laughs> like on any of the various social media that I have an account on, but never check... Um, or in my email or on the channel. I'm sorry if I haven't got back to you. I just have, I just get these all the time. So hopefully this video answers a bunch of questions. Here is a great example of this question. Hey Justin, I'm a touring guitar player based out of Indianapolis. I've been playing with a few local country artists, regional country artists. I look them up, they're pretty successful. I have been trying to scale up in my term, in terms of growing my little business and supporting my wife while doing something I love. Uh, first of all, I don't see a ton of these within weeks that they're sent to me. Uh, that one kind of grabbed my attention because I've been in that spot. I've been that guy who just got married or back up a little bit, who was about to get married and then decided, I think I got to try to play music for a living. That's crazy. Um, moving on. I'm sure you get emails and messages like this all the time. Yes. I don't mean to add to the pile, but I'm hoping some insight from you and others that are out there working like I would like to. That's kind of a fragment, but I get what he means. I'm not exactly sure what to ask here, but to ask a general question, what steps could or should I be taking to making this, toward making this a sustainable income? I'm working on a website, YouTube and Facebook page to get exposure in the space. I'm assuming he means just like to grow an online presence, right? I'm working on my actual craft, but I'm finding it hard to break through. I appreciate any time and response, but also understand if you don't, just looking for a little guidance and inspiration. Thank you for the YouTube content. It has been super educational and inspiring. I know you have touched on my question above, but I thought making contact and talking it through would be worth it. Cheers. All right, I wanna to try to keep this video short because I can ramble. And uh, I wrote down some points here. Um, I want to answer that question by making three points. The first point is nobody owes you anything. That might be hard to swallow. Um, a lot of people do what they perceive to be all the right things. I've put all the ingredients in to the bowl. I've mixed it together and my dish tastes like crap or why isn't this working, you know? And, you know, I, I see... I hesitate to use the word entitlement issues, but I tend to see people thinking that they're uh, like ready for their gig or where's my gig when they just came out of music school. Uh, that can be a brutal awakening, you know, like your, your degree in music performance is 
in no way a <laughs> guarantee that you're going to get a gig. Um, I just think that if you approach this from the perspective of everything that I get, I am thankful for. Every gig that I get is a gift. It's a privilege. I'm going to treat your gig like it's my baby. <laughs> I'm going to learn all of my parts as best as I can. I'm going to also be the most no-hassle, low-drama guy you've ever hired. Um, I'm going to continually work on my craft so that I can come up with creative ideas for when there's a chance on the gig to step outside of playing your recorded music, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be on time. I'm going to be clean. I'm not going to have any weird smells, you know. Like, there's so much stuff to think about. And if you approach it from the perspective that it's a gift that I'm even here, then you will not develop the kinds of, like, frustrations and attachment issues and things that, that happen to people who are, like, I don't know, like, sort of experience rejection over and over and over, and so there's a little bit of desperation that they can't hide that ends up pushing people away. I don't wish that on anybody. So... I think if you approach it from the perspective of nobody owes me anything, this is a gift and I'm happy to be here, and start cultivating your craft from that perspective, you might have better results. I think you will have better results. Point number two, and this is more of a question, um, where do you live? Uh, this guy lives in Indianapolis, and it sounds like, from the artists that he's playing with, it sounds like he's sort of might be maxed out in terms of uh, finding a bigger gig while still living in Indianapolis. I think there's still, even though we're in the internet age and we're all more connected than we ever have been and probably should be, uh, you still need to be in a scene, I think. I know that as someone right now who plays on records, I just had another number one. I think that's like 14 or 15 for me. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> like That's huge. I, I can't believe it every time it happens. you know, They chose me to be a part of that song. That's incredible. Um, where I'm at now and all the things that I've done and the things I've accomplished, if I were to physically move myself, say, to uh, Wyoming, that's kind of a... I have a romantic idea of Wyoming and Montana, and I know that those places are absolutely brutal like seven months out of the year or more, but uh, man, mountains, wide open spaces, elk everywhere. <laughs> if I were to move there and maintain my online presence, like my income would just nosedive. I still make the majority of my money playing sessions in town, and I still get the majority of my remote work from artists, producers, and songwriters in town because I'm on session seeing them in person. Music is a very relational thing, and there's a real familial team aspect to tracking a song. It's like we're all united in the goal of making this song as best as we can when we're recording it. Everyone on the floor is listening to each other. We all have ideas, you know, um, and you get it done or something happens that's like a little extra magical that's not doesn't always happen people are high-fiving each other people are hugging each other like it's a big deal playing music with people in person it really is so when i ask the question where do you live i think what i mean is like how how much can the scene that you're in support what you do I think you can stay in a place like Indiana if you're okay with like cultivating a schedule of students to teach. There's still people who want to learn one-on-one, -on -one, you know. You might not get a gig that keeps you really busy or pays all your bills. You might get to the point, like if you're married, like maybe you probably don't want to be on the road all the time. But maybe you're approaching it like I did. I was like, this is a necessary step. I'm going to be gone on the weekends, but my wife and I are going to have our own weekend in the middle of the week. We're going to be very intentional with the time that we have because our marriage is very important to us. And at the end of the day, you know, you kind of got to just realize, like, this is means to an end. It really is. It's a job. 
And uh, if you have a job, if you're able to pay your bills, man, just having the perspective of gratitude is is huge. And I think I think it will take you a long way. You know, there, there's a lot to to critique about the current economy, how jobs are going, the price of things relative to what people have earned. I'm not saying that that's not the case. I'm just saying that I think it's healthier for us <laughs> individually approaching our own career with all the ups and downs, walls we run into, things we're able to climb over or can't figure out our way to get around. It's a lot healthier if you're grateful. It really is. So, um, number one, no one owes you anything. Number two, where do you live? Can the scene support what you do? Um, number three, what do you offer? Do you offer um, playing chords on someone's song and then shredding your brains out when it's time to take a solo? Is that what you offer? Because that's you can't build a career out of that. You cannot build a career out of that. The more guitar-y that your thing gets, the narrower your market becomes. Sorry, not sorry. That's just reality, you know? If your entire practice regimen and what you're excited about is licks and solos and, and you put all of your momentum and development and into cultivating amazing solos, great, that's amazing. You are probably not going to work much in this world. Uh, you need to learn songs, not licks, okay? Learn songs, not licks. Um, learn entire records. Learn the, rick the licks on the records that you like, but don't just focus on that, you know? Start stepping back and thinking, what am I really bad at? How could I have more things to offer? You know, think of yourself as setting up a shop, all right? And you've got one product on the counter. I play great guitar solos. What's the product next to that? I also learn all the parts off of your record the way that you want to hear them. Okay, well, now you're more marketable. you got two products to offer. Number three, I also sing harmonies. If you're a touring person and you want to tour, start singing. Like, start singing 10 years ago, okay? Um, the more people with a mic in front of them on stage, uh, the better. And I remember back when I was getting ready to get off the road, just how many people had to sing on a gig. And somehow I found a gig where I didn't have to sing. And I'm not so sure that that's the case anymore. I think almost everybody in, in bands, at least smaller bands, you know, the very top touring acts like Chesney or Eric Church or Tim McGraw or whatever, I don't think everybody's singing on those gigs, you know. But I didn't tour in one of those bands, you know. My last touring gig was David Nail, and I played electric guitar. He had a bass player, Kyle Kelly, great dude unreal singer like david's one of the best singers i've ever worked with in my entire life and kyle could just follow right above follow him everywhere it was while playing bass that's hard <laughs> it was incredible um what else do you offer you know what else are you looking to do you maybe you're not just looking for gigs maybe you want to start recording do you just play electric guitar do you just are you just gonna like strum open chords for the whole song and then play an awesome solo, that's not gonna work. Do you offer parts? Do you offer creativity? Do you offer things that are compelling to the person hiring you? Do you play other instruments? Like, don't just play country telly and think you're gonna build a career out of it. You gotta play all sorts of styles on electric. You gotta pick up an acoustic. You should probably have a banjo, at the very least a six string ganjo, which people still kinda hate. <laughs> It's just such a cheater, you know, like I'm gonna get all the tone and texture of a banjo, but it's but you can hear that they're playing guitar chords on it. I don't know. I'm a banjo owner. Sorry. Uh, learn mandolin, you know, learn bass, um, learn slide. Um, what do you not offer? You know, in your little storefront, you are a self-employed, you're a contractor, right? Freelance. How many things can people buy from you at your little stand, you know? Can they just buy five-minute solos? You're not going to sell anything. I'm just sorry. I'm sorry. That's just the case. So th those are the three biggest things. And, you know, 
the the hardest decision to make in all of that is probably moving or not moving to a, a, a town with a scene. I think Nashville, L.A., New York, uh, Southern South Florida, uh, Texas, Nashville, Texas, and Florida are probably the easier places in terms of cost of living for sure. But uh, you know, some of the biggest gigs in the world, biggest records in the world, are made in 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 L.A. still in New York. So I, I think, you know, for me it was it was um, I have to get somewhere that there's a scene that can support me where I can have multiple clients and I can continue to grow my craft while working, you know, and work toward a later goal of doing only sessions while I'm on the road. Um, it happened for me. It does not happen for everybody. I, I, I think the, the next level, each next level up, um, I'm picturing a wedding cake, right? Each level smaller than the one below it. That's true in our industry, you know? And even people at the very top, you know, you might think I'm at the absolute pinnacle, you know, he, he's playing on the records, he's on the radio, like, well, kind of, I haven't worked for every producer in town, but I'm doing everything I came here to do, you know, and still I'm finding that people pivot, people offer other things, you know, the ground is constantly shifting underneath our feet. Um, in the 90s, session players made $300,000 a year just playing on records, well, people also had to buy records back then. <laughs> so these days it's just different. You know, I, I see other players pivot. Tom pivoted to YouTube. Uncle Larry, right? Congrats on 100K subs, by the way. That's awesome. Um, I'm one of those subscribers. Yeah. Uh, let me think. Who else? Derek Wells um, has become a producer, right? And he's working with a company, Spirit Music, who like like they they publish writers they develop artists and manage songs and all this stuff and he's kind of like an a and r a and r guy and so that role is like matching songs to artists you know and if you're somebody who's played on a bunch of hits and you're producing records like that's probably a skill that you naturally developed in the studio you know and so he's pivoted to that he still plays on other people's records but he's also like VP of a and r you know <laughs> like a foot in the like day job business world of the music scene as opposed to the and still a foot in this in the studio space um just off the top of my head i'm going to list a bunch of players guitar players or not um that i know right i know rob mcnelly writes adam schoenfeld writes evan hutchings writes uh david dorn writes um there's a lot of people who write and who are starting to produce other artists. I produce some projects here and there if, if the fit is right, you know. Uh, but when you see everyone at the top, what you perceive to be the top, like that's where I want to go. When you see them start to pivot and to do other things and you're here and you're like, man, I'm outside of town. I'm not even in Nashville. I don't have a full-time touring gig. I'm not doing any sessions. Here are the people who play on the big records and they offer so many different things, I better start expanding the things that I offer, right? And if you want to build a career recording, if you want a significant income, I don't think you can do that solely with an online presence. I just don't. Maybe I'd love to be wrong about that, but I think that being in a scene, making music relationally with people, having some kind of reputation like that guy played on that song that blew up or on that record that blew up let's try him out here that still kind of needs to happen so if you're grateful for all of it and if you make um, the decision to offer as many different things as possible and you decide to move somewhere it's still not guaranteed that it's going to happen and that's okay because at the end of the day it's a means to an end it's not more important than your marriage it's not more important than your relationship with your kids it's work and work is a good in and of itself i happen to believe that we were created to work to be creative ourselves to be fruitful and i have so much respect for people who do that in something that isn't like as 
desirable of a job. Something that you're not going to like post to Instagram. Just another day at the office. Here I am at the studio. <laughs> you know, um, if you have a job that you don't love, but you're committed to it because you're committed to the people who depend on you, you have my utmost respect. And I just want to close the video with a word of caution. This world, the music scene, is a massive idol for so many people. It becomes the biggest part of their identity. It becomes the ultimate thing in their lives. And you just can't... <laughs> I, I don't think we were made to, to have a thing like our job or like the scene we work in or the reputation that we develop to have that as the ultimate thing that defines who we are. I think it's far healthier, I know it has been for me, to hold it with an open hand. It can be taken, and I'm okay with that. If some of the decisions that I make to, you know, put my family first, uh, if, if that means that I start to slide and, and sort of get, just sort of pushed out to the periphery, like, I'm okay with that, you know? So, perspective, you know? And uh, I hope this helps answer the question for... A lot of you guys and girls who have who have emailed or messaged me or whatever. Have a great day. I'll see you all later.